Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Faculty Development Program. My name is Dr. Vanshika, and topic of my presentation is Drosophila melanogaster, fly that unfold genetics. Drosophila melanogaster is commonly known as fruit fly, is one of the most commonly used model organism in the field of biomedical sciences. It serves as the excellent genetic tool, which is important for basic research because of the availability of the numerous molecular tools, it has allowed the model organism to be used for the human disease modeling, like dissection of the cellular morphogenesis, behavior, aging, brain development, mutations, complementation analysis, etc. Learning objectives from the presentation would be importance of the drosophila as the model organism, culturing the drosophila, for the students at the undergraduate level, putting the genetic process to verify and study the mode of inheritance to observe the higher order structures of chromatin. Drosophila melanogaster is a fruit fly. Uh, Drosophila melanogaster is a fruit fly, a little insect about three millimeter long, of the kind that accumulates over the spoiled fruits. It is also one of the most valuable organism in the biological research, particularly in genetics and developmental biology. Drosophila has been used as model organism for the research for almost a century. And today, several thousand scientists are working on many different aspects of the fruit fly. The history has started with the Woodward who has who was the first one to cultivate the fruit fly in his lab. Later, the William Castle used these fruit flies for his inbreeding studies. Castle has developed the banana technique for culturing the fruit flies in the laboratory. His student, Lutz, studied the drosophila biology and inheritance of the wing variation. Later, the Thomas Morgan has developed a fly room in which he has proved the chromosomal theory of inheritance, which shows that the Y gene resided on the X chromosome. His findings has fetched a Nobel Prize. He and his student then went on defining the many principles of genetics, including the effect of X rays on mutation for which Mueller also won the Nobel Prize. Morgan and his students and his wife, all of them worked together with this little fruit fly, provided a direct experimental evidence for the chromosomal theory of inheritance by confirming that the genes are indeed located on the chromosome. Research in the fly room at the Columbia University, where Morgan worked from 1912 sorry, 1910 to 1928, established the new post-Mendelian genetics as an essential component of the biological studies. Many fundamental discoveries were made in that fly room, which has attracted a large number of visitors, and soon the drosophila has become popular and commonly known as centrilla of genetics. Its importance for the human health was recognized by a Nobel Prize won by Lewis, C. N. Vollard, and Wischers in 1995. We could wonder that which features of the Drosophila contributed to its historical importance as the best model organism for study in genetics. The points are many. The care and culture of this organism requires very little equipment, space, and expense. It is non-pathogenic to humans. It can be safely handled and ready, readily in its thighs. The morphology of this organism is easily identified. This organism has sharply defined body phenotypes, which facilitates the identification of male and female flies to put the crosses. 
also the sexual mosaics and the mutants can be readily produced, identified, and cultured. It has short generation time as it completes its life cycle within 10 to 12 days at 25 degrees Celsius. Female flies have high fecundity. They can lay up to 100 of eggs per day. The complete genome of the Drosophila is known and annotated, available in the public database. Drosophila genome has about 165 million space pair, and it has been studied that 50% of the fly genes are similar to the humans and the 75% of the genes, which are disease causing in humans have their Drosophila autologs. Also, the presence of the giant polytene chromosome enables the easily localization of the genes on the specific chromosome regions to develop the physical maps and examine the gene activity. The practice of free sharing of the newly discovered mutants across the world was started by the Morgan and it is continuing till date. It is internationally agreed that the Drosophila can be sent across the world through postal services. The stock centers are made well established in different countries, which greatly facilitated the exchange of new genetic resources globally. No other model organism matches the genetic resources available for the Drosophila. Let's understand the life cycle of the Drosophila. Drosophila being homo, uh, sorry, Drosophila being holometabolous dipterian insect has distinct stages of the development, namely egg, larva, pupa, and then adult. During these stages, duration, sorry, duration of these stages varies with the temperature. At 25 degrees Celsius, the adult emerges within 10 days. But at 20 degrees Celsius or lower, it requires about 15 to 16 days. Drosophila males displays a complex repertoire of mating behavior that has evolved to achieve the reproductive success. This includes the following, the female tapping her with his forelegs, singing a species-specific courtship song, and bending his abdomen to copulate. Once the mating is done, the eggs are hatched near or onto the surface of the media. The diff, uh, they, uh, these eggs hatch about one day later to produce the tiny larva. The different larva instars can be identified by their age, body size, spiracles, and mouth hooks. The moles and the intermole larval growth are regulated by the hormone ichthyosome and juvenile hormone. The first, second, and third insta largely remain in the food, actively feed, and increase their body size. Late third instar larva come out of the food and crawl in search of some dry place, which is commonly the wall of the culture wire. Larva adhere to such kind of dry places using the glue protein, which is secreted by the salivary gland, following which they undergo the last mold to begin their pupal stage. Pupa is formed within the last larval cuticle, which is in the beginning is soft and white. Gradually, this cuticle hardens and becomes darker in color due to the chitinization and sclerotization. During the next four or five days, the pupa undergoes the complete metamorphosis within the pupal case and emerges as an adult fly. 
the sexual dimorphism within the drosophila is clearly seen. Examination of the sexual genitalia under the microscope is the best means of distinguishing the sex of the flies. The male flies exhibit the darker colored external genitalia, which is visible on the ventral side of the tip of the abdomen. Some characteristics are distinguishable, which helps to sort the male flies from the female flies. First is their size. Male flies are a little smaller than the females. The shape of the male fly is little rounded and blunt in the caudal extremity, whereas the females are more sharp and pointed. The abdomen of the male is relatively narrow and cylindrical, whereas the female is distended and appears to be spherical or ovate. Color. There is a presence of a black fragment in the caudal extremity of the males, whereas females do not show that prominent, uh, prominent pigmentation. Sex cones. Only males have small tuft of black bristles, which are present in the front leg. They can be easily seen under the 40x magnification. Sex combs are totally absent in females. Historically, the famous fly room at the Columbia University had drosophila experts like Morgan, Strowen, Bridges, and others who have their sharpest eyes to recognize various mutant phenotypes. So that within the few years of the drosophila genetics, the fly room has the large number of mutations isolated from various wild-type populations. They evolved a system of naming and symbolizing each mutation, and their discoveries has laid the foundation in science of genetics. The normal drosophila eye color is red, but various mutations are seen which has led to the various eye color mutants. In some of the mutants, the pigment of the eyes can be totally absent, or they can present with one or the other pigments due to which different types of eye color can be exhibited. Let's look up the mutants, eye color mutants, one by one. First, we can see the wild type. This was the first mutation which has been observed in Drosophila and it was discovered by Morgan only. The gene which is associated with this mutation is named as W and it is located on X chromosome. It is a recessive mutation and the eye appear totally white. It means that the eye lacks the eye pigments. The second one is white apricot. The gene name is WA and it is also located on X chromosome. The eye of the drosophila appears yellowish pink in color and this mutation is also recessive. Next is brown eye color mutation. The gene for the brown color is located on chromosome number three. This mutation is also recessive. And when the fly emerges, the eye color appears little light brown wine. But as the fly grows, it darkens to garnet. Another mutation is scarlet. It is also located on chromosome number three. It is also a recessive mutation in which the eye appear very bright vermilion, and this color darkens with each. Cinnabar. This the gene for this mutation is located on chromosome number two. The eye appear bright red in color, and the color darkens and become dull with age. 
another is vermilion bright red orange color rosy the gene of this rosy mutation is on chromosome number 3 which is also recessive and the eye color appear to be deep ruby another eye color mutant which is observed is cpr the chromosome location of this gene is chromosome number 3 only recessive mutation the eye color is brown at occlusion it darkens to sepia and become black with age drosophila being a dipterian has a proper pair of wings which have a definite shape and structure as well as orientation on the body because of the mutations which are observed in wing genes also some of the uh, wing mutants are also being available first mutant is cut wings here the wings may be cut at the edges and scalloped another is vestigial mutant here you can see the wings are extremely reduced it is a recessive mutation in the classical vestigial mutant the wings of the homozygous is a homozygous mutant are restu, uh, reduced to vestiges and held usually at the right angles to the body we can observe the veins in the wings the mutation for the uh, the gene and the mutation occur at the chromosome number 2 culturing such kind of mutant vestigial mutant basically at 29 degree celsius greater uh, lead to the great appreciably increase in the wing size next mutant is microptera where the wings appear to be small and spoon size another mutation scalloped here the edges are not well defined and thickened they have a thickened veins next mutation veinlet here the veins or what you call cross veins they do not reach the margins cross veinless here the cross veins are absent dumpy mutations there is a dump or a cleft in the wings flexus the wings have the extra veins now here we could see that some of the mutations are also being seen in the body color of the drosophila the normal body color of the drosophila is gray due to some mutation in the concerned genes the color of the body can be changed give rise to the different mutants like yellow color mutant black color mutant ebony mutant the yellow color mutant has been seen that the mutation is on x chromosome in the recessive condition the body color is yellow and the fly has a brown bristles with the yellow tip the wings hair and veins are also seen yellow ebony mutant the ebony gene mutation occurs on chromosome number 3 it is also recessive the body color here is shiny black a little darker than the wild type the last body color mutant is black the black body color gene is located on chromosome chromosome 2 the black pigment is on body along with the wing veins <clears throat> the body color get darker at the lower temperature such flies can carry the mutation in the single gene more than one mutation which may be on the same chromosome 
or on the different chromosomes. Culturing of the Drosophila, a very important aspect. Ideally, these flies are reared and handled in the rooms that maintain the temperature at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Flies can also be reared in BOD incubator with the temperature maintained within this range. Higher or the lower temperature can adverse effects on the fly viability and fecundity. Continued exposure to 30 degree or more may cause sterility or death. Whereas the lower temperature at about 18 degrees Celsius can delay the life cycle and may impair the viability also. Maintenance of the fly culture in the laboratory requires care and vigilance to ensure that the flies are healthy and of appropriate genotype in a given culture. Overcrowding is a common concern which is seen in the various laboratory. It can lead to hamper the fitness of the flies. Also, when the fly vials are overcrowded, the dead flies adversely affects the fitness. Young larvae are meant to eat more and more and they remain inside the food. But if there is an overcrowding, then they need to move out. And that could lead to the death of the larva. Starting a new culture should always be all, uh, starting a new culture should always be with the appropriate number of the flies. About 10 to 20 flies are appropriate. Or if you want more, you can start with less than 50 flies at a time. As a good practice, flies should be reared at about 25 degree at about 25 degrees Celsius, and they should be regularly transferred within 20 to 30 days into the fresh media. It is also recommended to maintain the fly cultures in duplicates. That will provide you the backup of the flies. Also, the proper records of the fly stock transfer should be maintained. A typical growth media of the flies contain the corn flour, and powdered sugar. Both of them act as a rich carbon source. To prepare the solid media, we add agar agar as a gelling agent. We mix the contents so that no lumps could be seen and then we cook them properly into the microwave. After the first boil, we add yeast extract or solar yeast whichever is available. Yeast extract act as a rich source of vitamins and amino acids. We also ensure at this step that no lungs are left and we cook it again. After the proper cooking of the media, we add a we let the media to cool for a while and then we add antifungal agents like propionic acid, and sodium benzoate. Then we transfer the media up to one-fifth height of the container. The containers could be the milk bottles or the culture vials. We allow the media to cool properly and then cap the vials and the bottles and place them into the fridge at four degrees Celsius. We should be cautious that the walls should not have the stick media around it. Also, there should be no water condensation around the walls. It can damage the transfers of the flies. We should take care that media which we are preparing should neither be too hard or neither nor should be uh, too soft. If we prepare the hard media, then larva will not able to feed on the media appropriately and hence they will die. If media would be too soft, then it would hinder the transfer of the vials to the fresh media, transfer of the flies to the fresh media. 
some tools are required for handling the flights. First one is very important. That is the stereo binocular microscope. It is needed to examine the flies. We examine the flies under the binocular microscope. First, we take out the flies, anesthetize them, and examine the male and the female features. <coughs> we also need some of the other tools to transfer and anesthetize the flies, like conical funnels, flasks, forceps, soft bristle brushes, dropper, and re-etherizer. Uh, re To, studies, uh, to study these flies, we need to anesthetize first. And uh, the, uh, why we need to anesthetize? That uh, these flies can fly and move anywhere. Therefore, it is very important to anesthetize them so that they should not move. There are various methods or chemicals available to anesthetize them. First one, which is most commonly used, is diethyl ether. Diethyl ether is a flammable compound, have a so strong odor. If flies are over etherized, they can be killed. You can see the excessive long exposure of the diethyl ether to the flies lead to the death of the flies. And the dead flies can be easily identified by their wings extended at the right angles to the body, and they have folded legs. If the appropriate amount of etherization is done, the wings are proper. Another method which we use is use uh, use uh, we use a chemical which is known as flynap. Now flynap is a chemical which is marketed by Carolina Biologicals and it is a mixture of triethylamine, ethanol, isopropanol, methanol. It has some fragrance also. The flies can be anesthetized using this fly nap for 30 minutes. It is a little messy and someone may not like the order also. Another method is use of carbon dioxide. Now, this carbon dioxide works very well. It keeps the flies immobile mobile for longer time. And it does not have any kind of side effect. But uh, using the carbon dioxide mats or blocks are very expensive. We, also, we could also need a gun, which is known as carbon dioxide gun, and a delivery system of the, uh, of the carbon dioxide, like wires and clamps which are necessary and that can increase the further cost. The last method is cooling, which is, uh, which is very inexpensive and very simple. It requires only freezer, ice, petri dishes. And uh, this method is not going to affect the fly neurology. Therefore, the behavior studies of the fly may begin after the fly have warmed up sufficiently. In order to capacitate the flies, the culture vials are placed in the freezer until the flies are not moving. Generally, it takes about eight to 12 minutes. Also, the flies can be dumped over a chilled surface. We can easily construct this chilled surface in our laboratory. What we can do, we can take the petri dish, we can keep that petri dish over the crushed ice surface, and then over that petri dish, we can lead to the transfer of our flies. Cover the petri dish and allow the flies to chill over the ice. It will lead to the anesthesia. We can do all the sorting, put all our experiments, and then you can transfer that chilled ice onto the fresh medium and wait till they wake up. 